Hello pilots, my name is Untold Force, and in this video we will cover the VKB stacks in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, but many of the principles are applicable to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as well. This video is designed for new VKB pilots as well as returning ones, so I've broken it into short chapters that you can jump to below. I will be covering a lot of information, so please feel free to pause or review sections. Let's take a moment and become familiar with the Stex modularity and features. As with most VKB controllers, Stex is highly modular and configurable. Stex stands for Single Twin Engine Control System and can be composed of combinations of these five main components. One, the Core Throttle Module. Two, ATEM or Auxiliary Throttle Extension Module. Three, STEM or Standard Throttle Extension Module. Four, the grip itself. At this point, we have the Modern Throttle Grip MTG, and the Space Throttle Grip, STG, also referred to as the Space Throttle System, or STS. Finally, five, the Modular Detent System. All three current variants of the Stex are on display with some of my own additions. From left to right, the Stex Modern Throttle Grip Mark I, the Stex Modern Throttle Grip Mark II, and the Stex Space Throttle System. There's also a right-hand variant of the Stex available, but I don't have one yet. In addition to the main modules that we just covered, the Modern Throttle Grip also has additional modules for the grip itself. You may have heard about the Mark I versus Mark II Modern Throttle Grip. The grip has one major change. The index finger position has new electronics in the Mark II version, allowing for the placement of an analog stick module instead of just a switch or hat in the index position. This means that you can have two one or no mini sticks in your modular layout with the Mark II grip. You can swap modules in and out of your grip to make your own perfect throttle. The non mini stick module locations can have a single button, a rocker switch with push, or a five way hat switch. You can also purchase the stacks with the space throttle grip, which is called the space throttle system. This was designed for spaceflight like Star Citizen or Elite Dangerous, but it uses the same core throttle system as the modern throttle grip. The Space Throttle Grip incorporates an entire joystick gimbal on top of the throttle, allowing you to have X and Y axis movement in addition to throttle movement. It's a novel concept and can be used to control your camera controls, player movement, or even rudder or tiller operation in MSFS. Additionally, the Space Throttle Grip has right and left hand variants, which the modern throttle grip does not have at the time of the release of this video. South Paws rejoice because you can finally enjoy Stex 2. Before we go further, let's make sure that your Stex is properly assembled, configured, and calibrated. If you haven't done so already, please watch the Stex setup video, which covers these topics. The link to this video is in the description below, or you can find it on the VKB Sim YouTube channel. If you have any questions or problems, you can jump into the VKB Discord, which is also linked below. We even stage regular community flights, and you're invited. Keep in mind that the button numbering will be dependent on your module configuration, so for this reason Stex controller bindings are not easily shared from one person to another. A single module difference could change everything. Don't worry, as I'll help you get set up and flying in no time. VKB released an entire video showing how to swap modules. If you want to swap button modules, please watch that video and do not forget to initialize the modules after swapping. To initialize modules, unlock the right and left grips and look at the diagram on the inside. Hold the ENT button and the right front or forward trigger for a few seconds while plugging the stacks into your USB port to initialize new modules and then let go of those buttons. You only have to do this after switching modules. I made a simple starter template to help you get set up in Flight Simulator. Because of the modular nature of stacks, there are many different PDF variants. The blank Adobe PDFs, as well as the starter templates, are available on the VKB website, with the link below. Take a moment to pause the video and download them, and take a look at them. For example, the Stex Mini includes just the core module page. Mini Plus includes the core and ATEM. Stex Standard includes the core module and STEM. Stex Max includes core, ATEM, and STEM. A common complaint is that each module is on its own page. There are so many possible inputs and combinations that I would have had to make dozens of PDFs which would have gotten very confusing very quickly. 
You can edit the PDFs yourself and save them, or print them out for your cockpit reference booklet, pull them up on a tablet for reference while flying, or even open them up on your second, third, or fourth monitor. After a few days, you'll find yourself relying less and less on the references to the point where it'll become second nature. If you would like a more in-depth reference on how to use and edit the template pages, please take a look at my VKB Gladiator MSFS 2024 video. The link to that video is in the description below. Because you might have stacks in any one of hundreds of possible configurations, paired with any number of joysticks or other peripherals, there is no way for me to come up with one solution that works best for you. Please use the templates and adjust them, edit them, and most importantly, make them your own. Our hobby is one where we constantly modify things and make them better for our individual needs. A DCS player might look in horror at my use of the front triggers for reversers, for instance, while MSFS player might appreciate that they don't need to use a detent to activate reverse thrust. Please have fun with the process. VKB device config, or VKB dev config for short, is going to be a helpful tool for all stages of the flight simulator binding process. You should have this program downloaded as part of the stack setup, but if not, Take the time to download it now. I want to warn you that as new versions of this program come out, your interface may look different than mine, but the features should be the same. Let's open VKB Dev Config at this time and go over some of the most important features. The top panel lists all of the VKB devices that you have connected. I have the Modern Throttle Stex Max listed right here, so I'll double click it to load the settings from this device. There's an entire manual dedicated to the things you can do with this incredibly powerful software, but right now, we want to open the Test tab at the bottom and click the Buttons slash POVs tab in the middle. Go ahead and click a few buttons on your device. You should see the corresponding buttons light up red in the Test tab. We will use this tool to find the device buttons so we can bind them in Flight Simulator. Now, let's click the Axis 1 tab in the middle of the screen. This lists all of the analog inputs coming in from the stacks. Try moving the throttle now and watch as the axis X and axis Y move. Unlock the throttles and you should see them move independently. Try adjusting the thumb wheel on the base and watch the response here. If you have an analog mini stick installed, try moving it around and watch the analog inputs. If you don't have experience with binding controllers in MSFS 2024, I highly recommend that you watch the VKB Gladiator MSFS 2024 intro video. I go through setting up bindings in depth. The link to that video should appear on your screen right now, or you can also go to the link which is found in the description below. Let's begin under the assumption that you have never connected the stacks to MSFS 2024. Click the gear at the top right to go to the settings screen, then click the controls tab. On the left, you'll see a list of devices that are connected. Let's select the Stex Modern Throttle Max Stem. The device name of your stacks depends on the modules that are connected and configured, so the name may change if you add or remove modules. Since MSFS saves bindings by device name, adding or removing a stem or ATEM module may cause you to have to rebind your controls. MSFS 2024 Sim Update 2 added the ability to import and export controller binding profiles, allowing you to make backups or share bindings with other people. I made a short video covering this, so if you're interested, please watch it by following the link on your screen or in the description below. MSFS bindings are split into three categories. General controls, such as view controls, airplane controls like ailerons, rudder, elevator, and throttle, and finally, aircraft-specific controls, which can be specialized for a specific aircraft. This gives a huge amount of flexibility to your control scheme, but can also be quite complicated. If you don't have any general or airplane controls for your stacks, then create some right now. Click the small gear and select Create. Then create a profile that has a unique name. This is important. I'll call my general control profile Stex General and my airplane control profile Stex Airplane. If you use the same name for multiple profiles, then the simulator can get confused and force you to reload the profile manually for each flight. That can get annoying very quickly, so avoid that if you can. The most important part of the stacks is the throttle, so let's start by binding that. Here's the sample fillable Adobe PDF that I made for the stacks, which shows some starter bindings. And you can see the throttle 1 and throttle 2 axes listed here. I'm going to physically unlock the throttle lock function on the stacks, 
so I can bind the left and right throttles properly. When the lock is physically engaged, then both the left and right throttles will have the same value, which is how I fly most of the time. It's nice to have the option though. Before we do anything, make sure that filters is set to none in the bottom, so all possible options will be displayed. In the search bar, let's type throttle one axis, which is generally the main engine in single engine aircraft or the left engine in two engine aircraft. You can see in the list that this will be an airplane control and it will be of an axis type. Axis inputs are analog, meaning that they can have thousands of possible values. Click on the first empty box and now move the left throttle grip on your stacks. It should come up with joystick L axis Y. Repeat the process with throttle two axis in the search bar and your right throttle grip. This should come up with joystick L axis X. By default, these values will need to be inverted in the sim. To invert these values, click on the small gear at the right side of throttle one axis and check the set inverted axis box. Do the same for throttle two axis. While you can also invert the axis values using VKB device config, there's really no need as MSFS makes inverting axes quite easy. Now that we have the throttle axes bound, let's try binding a button. On the fillable Adobe PDF with the sample controls, let's look at the MB2 push button function for toggle landing gear. So let's try binding that. Just like before, make sure the filters is set to none at the bottom. In the search bar, type toggle landing gear. We now see that this is a digital control, meaning that it should be bound to a button instead of an axis. Fortunately, MB2 push is a button. Let's click in that box and push the MB2 button. You'll now see a button number pop up. Keep in mind that your button number will likely be very different from mine unless we have the exact same module configuration. This is why sharing configs for the stacks is difficult and you'll likely have to bind everything yourself. One of the most interesting features of the Stex is the modular detent system. Depending upon the Stex version that you have, you might have up to five different frames that you can use to program detents. VKB released a video on how to create and program these detents, and I highly suggest that you watch it. The link to that video should be on your screen and in the description below. I personally use detents for reverse thrust, but you can create them for many other purposes, such as idle thrust, afterburners, etc. With up to five encoders available on the stacks, depending on configuration, you have countless options for binding things in the aircraft that you like. You may find that the encoders are frustratingly slow by default and tend to overshoot. This is a limitation with the way that Windows handles button presses. While some people turn their encoders into axes using VKB device config, there is another way a free and open source piece of software that works great with VKB controllers, MobiFlight. MobiFlight allows for you to control parts of the aircraft that would otherwise be inaccessible through standard means. One of the MobiFlight contributors, Delta, created a special module that interfaces specifically with VKB devices. This module allows you to control LED light behavior on your VKB controllers based on things happening in your aircraft and also greatly upgrades the responsiveness of encoders. MobiFlight requires additional setup, but I also created a video demonstrating how to set that up. The link should be on your screen and in the description below. With Microsoft Flight Simulator and MobiFlight, the sky truly is the limit. I personally have my STEM module configured as a proxy for the Garmin G1000 in game, since I mostly fly smaller aircraft. The two encoders on the STEM allow me to control the encoders on the Garmin along with using the ATEM buttons to switch which encoders I'm targeting. I use the ATEM mini joystick to control electronic maps, allowing me to pan up, down, left, and right, and rotate the mini joystick encoder to control map zoom. I also use the Mark II dual analog mini sticks to give me unprecedented view controls, allowing me to translate the view up, down, forward, back, left, and right, and also to give me a zoom in and out feature. It's wonderful in VR. The Stex is a fantastic addition to any flight simulator enthusiast for its extreme versatility and features. It's become one of my favorite pieces of hardware, and it might become one of your favorites as well. The key is to identify the controls that you use the most and bind them to your Stex in a way that suits you. 
Airline pilots will use vastly different controls than bush pilots, so take the time to find what you need and make it yours. As always, if you have questions or need help, please visit the VKB Discord server. We're happy to be there for you. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that I'll see you in the skies.